I'm not even going to bother with an intro here. Getting into the top five movies for me that I've seen in 2017, my number five would be Split. As much as Shyamalan basically gifted us with one of the greatest comedies of all time when he made The Happening, I'm really glad that he's gone back to making good movies. Split is terrifying, it's suspenseful, it's really well shot, and of course James McAvoy pretty much gives the performance of his career as all of these different personalities. And uh, the thing that's got me really excited is the fact that Shyamalan is basically creating his own cinematic universe. This is a concept that's pretty much gotten old by now, but given how intelligently he's setting it up, I'm legitimately looking forward to seeing where he takes it in the future. As is the case with some other reviewers, my one main complaint with the movie is the fact that out of the three lead characters, there's only one that stands out as a strong character, whereas the others are just sort of there. In particular, there's the one who keeps reminding the other two that they need to do something, they need to fight, they need to find a way out. For some reason, her performance just comes off as really awkward. Number four is quite possibly the most polarizing film of the year, and that is Star Wars The Last Jedi. I do acknowledge that the film isn't perfect. I mean, the Porgs are just there to sell toys, of course. Captain Phasma is basically just there to sell toys, let's be honest. And honestly, I thought that the character of Rose was kind of weak, but overall, I loved it. I mean, a lot of people complained about the fact that The Force Awakens just felt like a rehash of the old Star Wars movies, and I think that's a fair criticism. With The Last Jedi, you do get a new story, and it didn't work quite as much for some people, but for my money, I loved the interactions between Rey and Kylo Ren. I loved uh, how you couldn't quite predict where the story was going to go, how, you know, these characters would be making plans to do something, and you'd be rooting them on. They get to succeeding in their plan and then that plan would completely fall flat which is pretty much how real life is I mean you try the best you can with every scenario and sometimes things just don't work out the way that you plan them also uh, the thing that I love the most about the movie was Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker he really just made the final act the most memorable scene of the movie. Uh, plus, the film has some pretty awesome visuals going for it. In particular, I'm not going to get too specific because it's basically a spoiler, but there's a thing in this movie that gets destroyed, and the shot of said thing getting destroyed, which I'm sure those of you who have seen the movie know what I'm talking about, I would pay to have that as a poster on my wall. My number three would be War for the Planet of the Apes. This was easily at least one of my most anticipated films of the year, if not my most. I mean, granted, I was a little let down at first by the fact that this wasn't much of an action movie, but the action that it did have in it was very well done, and really it was just a very emotional and suspenseful uh, story. I loved Woody Harrelson as the antagonist, and of course, Caesar and Maurice as the main apes were just great characters. And I also really liked the character of Bad Ape. I liked how he was able to provide comedic w relief without ever becoming distracting or annoying. And of course, I know it's been said a million times, but the special effects are phenomenal. Number two is sadly the only MCU movie of the year that I've managed to see so far, but it is a really good one. And I've taken some time to sort of process it and, you know, really think about this, but in my opinion, this is the best Spider-Man movie that we've had so far. Of course, I'm talking about Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, for one thing, they just really nailed the character of Peter Parker. Uh, I like the fact that they actually cast someone who is the right age to play him and that the movie actually acknowledges the fact that he is just a kid that he's going to fuck up at the start of his superhero career and that he has that boy scout mentality where he's going to do the right thing no matter what even if it gets him killed uh, plus it actually makes him legitimately funny 
He was pretty funny in the Amazing Spider-Man movies too, but I don't feel like they quite reached the right feel for the character there. Um, also, with the fact that we've gotten so many movies lately where we've had these very lackluster screen villains, uh, Michael Keaton gives a great performance as the Vulture. He was genuinely menacing, but also sympathetic at the same time. For my number one pick of the year, this is one that I saw very early on in 2017, and for a good while I couldn't imagine any other movie topping it, and you know, now that it's come to the end and I've taken some time to think about it, it really hasn't been topped for me. My number one film of the year is Logan. It was a really great emotional story with very intense action scenes, high emotion, uh, the little girl in it is of course badass, and if this is the last time we're going to see Hugh Jackman play the part of Wolverine, then he is certainly going out on a high note. Also, you know, as a horror movie fan, I really like the fact that they made this an R-rated movie. Um, really, there's nothing much else for me to say about it. It's just a really awesome film. So, I'm not normally the type of reviewer who asks questions at the end of my videos, but I would genuinely like to know, what are your favorite and least favorite films from 2017? Are there any that I haven't seen that you would recommend me checking out? My list is certainly pretty long as it is. I still really need to see Get Out and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Anyway, that's all I've got to say for this video. I hope you all have a good one.